It's a new dawn, a new chapter in Nigeria's judiciary. President Muhammadu Buhari has sworn in Justice Olukayo de Ariwola as a substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. Justice Ariwola, who spoke with newsmen after his swearing in, promised to bring reforms that will boost justice delivery system in the country. Let's hear Justice Olukayo de Ariwola. I give all the glory to God. And uh, I believe the law that had taken me this far will continue to support me to do the best for Nigerians. And as I said on the 27th of uh, June, when I was sworn in in acting capacity, I shall not let down Nigerians. Because with the support of my brother justices, like I can see all of them are here with me, as they were when I was sworn in in acting capacity, with their support, we shall not fail Nigerians. We shall make progress and, uh, you know, uh, advance the judiciary of Nigeria to benefit not only the common man, all men and women. We are computerizing already the Supreme Court and all other courts of records so that uh, the, the delay in filing cases will become a thing of the past. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are creating he filing, we are creating he diary so that uh, lawyers can stay in the comfort of their chambers and uh, contact the court, address the court by Zoom. Computerization is already taking place, not only in the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, and other courts of record in Nigeria. Politicians should allow the judiciary to function. You know, law is not static. And that's why you have seen that this, the, the National Assembly had continued to amend the laws. And it is the law that the courts apply to the facts available. We shall continue to do justice if only Nigerians will allow us to perform and function without any pressure. Allow the judiciary to function that independently, independent of just <laughs> new CGN. Of course, the pressures will come, whether the CGN likes it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's part of the job. Um, you, you are God's representatives on earth. You are like the mediator between God and man. So you should expect that um, you will face pressure. But the judiciary should be able to stand firm, even in the face of extreme pressure, um, saying that we hope that Nigerians will let them do their work without pressure is really not a uh, there is no way you won't face that pressure. People who want to take advantage of the situation, take advantage of friendship and all that. So, but judges know that they are answerable to God, and, and so they must be above board. And I want this CGN to learn from what happened to his predecessor, because the issue of welfare of his colleagues, Justice Ariwala was one of the just, justices who signed, who signed that petition. Yes. Eventually, it leaked to the press. Mm. But those issues are germane. Mm. A situation in which judges are traveling, they do not even have those who can help them. And they are supposed to travel with and aid at the expense of the state. Because at that age, well, even when mm. they are going for training, they are saying that, okay, those trainings have even shrunk. They are not coming like before again. And judges need training. They need to go abroad, look at the trends elsewhere, and see how they can apply what they have uh, uh, learned here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the issue of their welfare. You can't tell judges that from 4 o'clock, because this is expensive, that they should go home. Mm -hmm. They have to study. Or, or they have to prepare their, their, their uh, judgment. You restrict internet access. You can't do that. Mm. You can't do that. So he has to take the issue of welfare seriously. Yes. Remember when the, uh, the um, president of the Court of Appeal was also complaining the other day? It was also about the welfare of judges. Mm. President Buhari has promised to do something about 
the salaries of judges, because the salaries of judges is an embarrassment. In fact, it's a disgrace. What judges earn is a disgrace. What even judges at the level of Supreme Court earn is a disgrace. Not everybody can go to war, go to uh, trenches like Asu. But we must do the right thing. We must not wait until that embarrassing moment comes. The president has promised to do something about the wages of judges, and I expect him to do it before he leaves office. So the, uh, these guys, Justice Ariola was part of the people that wrote that petition, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now is seated there. That means whatever he is accusing the former um, CGN of, mm -hmm. that means within his responsibility, within his power, we must make sure that he, he performs optimally in yes, terms he, of the welfare yeah, of those guys. Yes, he has his to. Colleagues. He has to because um, Supreme Court judges, justices, work under a lot of pressure, and um, the judiciary actually needs to be reformed. The judiciary needs to be. He has said there will be reforms, but he should not pretend to be doing reforms and just end up with just you know a few cosmetic changes. He knows that the reforms go right down through the judiciary, so there must be changes. There must things must change. You must, you, must be, you must make the justices of the Supreme Court, even judges, like judges or the federal high courts and all that, they must be motivated to work. Mm. And then delays in, in honesty adjournments, delays in filing of cases and all of those encumbrances should be removed so that we can have a smoother judicial process. Mm. But a lot of these things are not there. And then one interesting thing is that <coughs> nobody, the, the CGN is not answerable to anybody. So it now behoves on him to put himself under check and make sure that he doesn't also put the judiciary under pressure. He talked about being put under pressure, but that is one problem. Julie, talking about, talking about pressure now, this is just one Supreme Court for the entire um, country. Yes. And you look at how busy the schedule mm. they have, uh, yes. you, the number of cases they have to dispense of. Mm. That's, Something will start from all the state high courts and the federal high courts, mm. the court of appeal, and it's everything will now land will result to yes. this will become very, very even busy. Matters that the board. number of judges, you land the matters. politicians. Yes, even matters, matters that, they can that will need um, the uh, they uh, will rather, expedient action. They will rather not uh, come to any form of agreement until it gets to the Supreme Court. Mm, yes, you yes. Know? Even when the it's way the matter that is going, it's clear the way that the court of appeal or the way the high court has appeal. The, the appeal. You're keeping these judges busy. And some lawyers court. too, some lawyers too, are even filing frivolous matters before mm. these judges. Mm. They are not making life unbearable for them. Tell the Supreme Court you know? to, uh, to, 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 to interpret to, their... No, the Supreme Court to... To, um, to reverse. reverse itself. And you know there's a portion of the Constitution that says that the decision of the Supreme Court cannot be changed. We are not lawyers. There. Elementary law. You should know it's that. There. Look, this is the apex court. So you want them to go against the Constitution? The Constitution strips the Supreme Court of the power to reverse itself. That's why Justice uh, Amina Oye burst into tears. Because she never imagined that a day will come when judges, uh, when uh, lawyers, some of them older than, than her, will now attempt to pile pressure on the, on the Supreme Court to go against the Constitution, to willfully go against the Constitution mm -hmm. by reversing itself. They can make mistakes, they are human. Mm -hmm. But the law does not permit them to say we change our mind about a judgment that we have made. And it's there, yeah, the Constitution. When, um, when Politicians the... will pile the pressure. They should expect it. When but the... they have to stand firm. When the, uh... When the National Assembly, when they were clearing Professor Skayamo, he made a suggestion, he, you know, something that is like what they do in the United States, as in, these are Supreme Courts, yeah. can it be unbundled? Why not? There are, there are certain cases, okay, look at the ASU case, for instance, you know, that from the industri from National Industrial Court, that the last level of education is the appeal court. So if you can do that at certain levels, and then, in certain cases, if you can introduce arbitration, so that, like what the Lagos State Governor now, we know that the governorship if can, tribunal mm. terminates yeah. at the Court of Appeal. Yes. yes. 
yeah, but, and, but if you, you can know, also no, but you can also you see, all of a you sudden see, you see politicians realize that that was a loophole. They exploited it. Hmm. They exploited we it. We were arresting judgment that time. Uh -huh. <laughs> they exploited it, and the I moment remember. they I know the particular matter that caused that change to happen. But I don't want to talk about it here. Hmm. Because it was clear that those judges were compromised. Very, very clear that they were compromised. Imagine when those who, who uh, took part in an electoral infraction came out to say, this was how we did it. And you still gave judgment to the other person. Ah, for God's sake. For God's sake. We should fear God now. That's how he got to that point. That, okay, we'll take it to the, book, to the most senior judges in the mm. land. Now let us see how, uh, it's yes. Me. So it's a lot more difficult now. It's mm. a lot more difficult. Mm. We, we have to get the Supreme Court to do less work. Mm. But mm -hmm. it will require the contribution of everybody. Even those judges, lawyers filing frivolous matters, they have mm. to talk to them, mm. to talk to them.